You're listening to Severus TV, Severus TV, and this is the Gadget Wrap with Crazy iOS Solutions. Welcome to the first podcast we have ever done on this topic, which is gadgets. Um, we have along with us here uh, Mrigang Saluja of Crazy iOS Solutions. Say hello, Mrigang. Hey, hey, Viraj. How are you? I'm very well. So... हम लोग काफ़ी टाइम से पॉडकास्ट करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं देन एवरी टाइम वी स्टार्ट अ पॉडकास्ट सम थिंग और दी अदर हैपन्स एंड इट्स सो ब्लडी एंड अवॉइडेबल दैट आप पॉडकास्ट कर नहीं सकते फाइनली वी वी स्टार्टेड अ पॉडकास्ट सो इस वाले पॉडकास्ट का मेन सब्जेक्ट मैटर वो इज ऑलवेज सपोज टू बी गैजेट्स एंड देर इज़ एन अदर सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोज दैट वीर डूइंग पॉइंटलेस गैजेट रिव्यूज विच विल पुट ऑन यूट्यूब यू कैन गो एन एक्सेस दैट लेकिन इधर इट्स नॉट पॉइंटलेस इट्स वेर एक्चुअली टॉकिंग सीरियस टफ सो दिस इज अ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ पॉडकास्ट आई डोंट नो वेदर इट वर्क और नॉट बट इट्स इट्स वर्थ अ शॉट सो गैजेट न्यू सो फर्स्ट थिंग आई आस्क मृगान बिकॉज ही इज एन एपल फैन इज दैट एपल जस्ट कैंसल द एयर पावर टच द नर्व एंड दे कैंसल दट टू ईयर्स आफ्टर अनाउंसिंग इट एंड जो एयरपोर्ट्स टू का डब्बा है उसमें एप्पल एयर पावर का डायग्राम है वेयर टू पुट दी एयरपोर्ट्स टू व्हेन यू वांट टू चार्ज इट सो अ ट्रिलियन डॉलर कंपनी अनाउंस्ड अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अ प्रोडक्ट एज अ रियल प्रोडक्ट कुड नॉट लॉन्च इट एंड नॉट ओनली कुड दे नॉट लॉन्च इट दे कंप्लीटली ओवर एस्टिमेटेड देयर केपेबिलिटी सो मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा एक ट्रिलियन डॉलर कंपनी से एक वायरलेस चार्जर नहीं बन सकता सी इट इज़ नॉट अबाउट अ ट्रिलियन डॉलर कंपनी आई एम श्योर दिस स्पेंड मिलियंस इन रिसर्च फॉर दैट चार्जर एंड देर मोर देन मिलियंस आई थिंक देर वन एंड हाफ ईयर ऑफ यू नो इट वॉज ऑन स्टेक देर वो रेपुटेशन वॉज ऑन स्टेक एंड आई एम श्योर कैंसलिंग द एयर पावर वॉज अ वेरी वेरी टफ मूव फ्रॉम एपल बट देन सी लॉज ऑफ फिजिक्स डोंट चेंज sometimes it's the laws of physics that uh, you know brings you down mm. and probably uh, it's not that ke this cannot happen future may probably will have that technology where the coils will support all this but i think apple uh, you know launched the concept too early nahi uh, if, if you try and get back to the phrase jo inhone exactly bola tha mm-hmm. they said it's a complex it's a complex problem to solve mm-hmm. but our engineers can do it ha huh. so uh, see i think uh, they were way over their heads when they thought their engineers could solve it and i'm sure they spent millions or probably uh, hundreds of millions in research for doing so also and probably they hired the best of engineers but in the end nature does bring you down and that is what has happened with apple and uh, this shows that not even a trillion dollar company is above nature so my reading if you read between the lines एंड गेट पास दी रेटरिक की चलो ठीक है वो तो ठीक है टांग खेचने में मजा आता है कि ट्रिलियन डॉलर कंपनी दिस दैट वॉट देर एक्चुअली सेंग इज कि नॉट दैट दे के नॉट डिवेलप दैट प्रोडक्ट इज दैट दे के नॉट गिव दैट प्रोडक्ट टू यू एट एन अफोर्डेबल प्राइस नो सो आई वुड डिफर हेयर वॉट दे आर सेंग इज वी कैन डेवलप दैट प्रोडक्ट बट दैट प्रोडक्ट राइट नाउ in that price bracket would won't be of that quality that we want to achieve so i'll tell you there are similar products like air power which were launched as soon as they launched the concept in china but those products have no viability so they overheat mm. some of them have uh, also caught fire this all these things is what apple doesn't want on their reputation after all the gates they have had and i think this is what made them uh, you know concede defeat for this product for now probably in the future we'll see a air power mat or it'll be called something else but right now i think apple is more worried about their reputation and uh, providing a good quality product rather than providing a product which they had promised and you know just getting over with it so that takes me to the larger point so aise nahi lag raha that apple is going through a real rough patch when it comes to their products because not only did they cancel the air power chalo they couldn't do it and they admitted it the macbooks 
uh, especially the 2017 MacBook and the 16 MacBooks came up with this new engineering concept, which in the typical Apple fashion described it as if they have reinvented the keyboard mm. with the butterfly <laughs> switch. Yeah. And then you had the keypad problems. You also had it. Your father also had it. You have both the new Macs. And then in 2018, they supposedly fixed that problem. And now you're getting feedback that people have replaced that keyboard three to four times and are still facing that problem. Now, if you're spending 20, 30,000 rupees on a laptop and if this problem comes, it won't pinch you as much as if you're spending a lakh and a half up to 3 lakh rupees which is the most expensive product which has the same keyboard so what do you have to say to that i think uh, you know see apple has always been innovators in their respective fields but uh, somehow in the past 3 4 years they have run out of innovations and they have been trying desperately to catch that break where they innovate and change the market trends in all these things i think they uh, you know come up with products and designs which uh, i don't know how it passes their r&d but it does and then in the future when it is mass produced the quality starts dropping so apple really needs to pick up uh, where you know their quality is uh, lowering and now what has happened is people have caught on if you remember, uh, recently they were, you know, scrutinized because they were, uh, they were, uh, what had happened with iPhone 6? They were? 5. No, not with the iPhone 5. Uh, with iPhone 5s, 6 and above, Six they, were throttling, they were throttling the performance the because speed. of battery. Mm. So they had to come up with a new software upgrade where they had to show you the battery health and everything. Mm. Because people caught on. People mm -hmm. know the devices are well capable enough to handle that performance for many years to come. Mm -hmm. But then why do you choose to do it? Because you don't want to give them battery replacements for cheap prices. That is where Apple's money making strategy after Tim Cook has changed. Steve Jobs was, the, was an innovator. He never believed in profits skyrocketing because of their product. Mm -hmm. He always wanted people to have the latest technology in affordable prices. And he wanted to change the market, which he did with, an, with his iPod, with his iPad, with his iPhone. All these were market changes. But now, Tim Cook, under Tim Cook, the strategy has changed. They want to, you know, milk on everything that they have with very less innovation. So that is where the problem is arising. So I have an interesting question for you. Though Apple has made bad products before and Apple has had quite a few gaffes in its history Yeah. Uh, with coming up with very short-sighted products. They tried to create their own alternative to USB, mm -hmm. which was uh, a, a very arrogant move and the industry showed them their place very nicely. And then they tried to create a magic mouse, which could only charge from the lightning cable right below the mouse that's the magic mouse that you have right now yeah. so that replaced my magic mouse which is a battery powered magic mouse and you just replace the batteries and you're good to go now your mouse is immobilized until the point that it charges and then you use it again so these are i mean they're not problems that actually are so big but they're irritating coming from a company that boasts that we are the most innovative product and we are the most innovative uh, thing out there in the business so what i've come the conclusion that i've drawn is that tim cook wala apple is far more successful than steve jobs wala apple no doubt because they this they figured out how to make money and more money but jo inki original strength thi that the product and the customer experience remembers how much how much steve jobs used to obsess over fonts Fonds. and things like colors. Uh, colors and things like how the keypad should feel in your yeah. hand so that soul of the company is somewhere either taken a back seat or maybe those engineers are gone somewhere so i have an interesting question for you is it that apple apple ne pehle bhi kharaab products banaye so is it that apple is goofing up is why they're losing a lot of very loyal admirers or is it because the other competitors have now become just as good if not better than apple 
no uh, see uh, competitors were always good google samsung uh, huawei all these companies were well capable of making all the phones all the gadgets well before uh, apple but uh, see steve jobs had a soul of innovation he always wanted that every product launched in the market should always be the best of the product with best of the innovation tim cook however has changed his strategy and is milking on the previous innovations and he he has basically learned that now that you can earn profits even if the product is not working is a good strategy and he is milking on it in the meantime all the competitors are coming up with products which are much more innovative uh, they are coming up with products which are exactly what the market reads uh, needs right now if you talk about oneplus oneplus has entered the flagship market and it has given competition to iphone even while selling it for one third of the cost so if you look at the market trends tim cook knows how to get money out of a customer even if the product doesn't work this won't last but then this is a good strategy to reach a trillion dollar mark so steve jobs coming back to the original thing steve jobs never had an intention to make his company big he always had an intention to make a product big even when they used to launch bad products they used to compensate with launching more innovative products tim cook basically just goes with the flow and sells and then say then sees what can be improved in the next lineup Mm-hmm. In this meantime, all the other competitors have started coming up in, with their innovations in the market. So, moving to other competitors now, you have the Galaxy S10, mm-hmm. which initially people were very impressed by. Yeah. But now it's starting to show some of its limitations. What what kind of limitations are there actually? मतलब इतना innovative product में क्या limitation हो सकता है? So, see, uh, all that glitters is not gold. Uh, now S10 has this punch hole camera screen which is full bezel-less screen and then the, it goes round to round but when you give a customer a ra- edge to edge screen you can't tell a customer how to hold a phone when people are holding their phone uh, now S10 is a very big phone S10 S10 plus are very big phones people with small hands will hold the phone firmly on both sides mm-hmm. now when they're holding the those phones the edges are so sensitive that Uh, the phone uh, misbehaves you can't expect a 70000 or 90000 device or a 1000 dollar device to misbehave just because you're holding it wrong you cannot teach people how to hold the phone mm. steve jobs tried to do this mm. with their iphone 4 if you remember uh, when there was a network the network gate. was not working yeah huh. so you cannot tell a customer who's spending 1000 dollars on a phone that you cannot hold your phone firmly or uh, don't hold your phone this way mm-hmm. so samsung no doubt has come up with the most innovative screen they are tell, they are even saying that you know samsung has saved the best screens for their phone and then it sells the screen to samsung or to apple mm-hmm. and the oled quality between 10s max and s10 is far uh, different and a lot of things are there but then what is the use of that screen and phone if i can't hold it uh, uh, you know the way i want mm. on top of that one ui uh, when it was launched and when people started getting their hands on one ui mm. it seemed like a very good experience but now it is very buggy the gesture controls which have been borrowed by the android 1 mm. are not complete uh, there's still uh, it it feels as as if they're half baked mm. so when you buy a 1000 dollar phone and you know uh, when you claim that uh, in the us they have 5g now and uh, they have a 5g model So when you claim to be technologically so advanced, your UI cannot be half baked, hmm. and that is where Apple is still making money because their iOS is far superior and far stable than any Android uh, uh, skin out there right now. So uh, the S10 is not necessarily a pure Android experience. You've owned the Pixel now, yeah, for almost just a shade under six months now. Mm-hmm. What has been your experience with the Pixel so far? phone is brilliant see uh, after using ios for 9 years i had never thought that i would uh, you know enjoy using android so much though i don't enjoy it as much as i enjoy ios but it comes very close so i've used 
uh, OnePlus, I've used S Galaxy S series for a long time. Mm. But the stock experience you get on a Pixel device, which let me tell you is as powerful as iPhone XS, mm. is simply smooth and brilliant. Mm. The only problem I have faced till now is, uh, again, their uh, gestures for multitasking seem a little half big, but then I cannot really uh, hold it against them because it's this first time they have changed this UI and probably in the next Android Q, they'll fix this. Mm. Apart from that, stock Android experience is as good as stock iOS experience. And uh, I, I really think everyone should, uh, you know, give you an option to use a stock Android. Fine, if a company wants their own skin on a product, that is fine. But then at least give the customer the option to use Android One. I don't think Android uh, in its stock form will ever see the light of day in a Samsung phone. I, I obviously, it won't. Speaking of innovation, <laughs> Samsung has just announced a Note 10 device. Just made the whole device from top to bottom, every corner is not going to have any buttons. So, how does it really, matlab, why is that such a big deal? See, uh, though these are just uh, leaked rumors. I mean, I mean, if I have buttons on my device, I never really complained. So why is that? Huh, such a no, big but uh, see, uh, if you look at the past market trends since three, four years, waterproof, dustproof phones have become a common norm. Uh, but the maximum rating a phone has ever gotten is IP68 which is not that big of a deal because your phone can still get damaged if it stays in uh, water conditions for long. Can you explain how this IP rating works? So what minutes? happens is there are different IP ratings. So IP68 is the highest rating a phone has gotten till now and that means that your phone can be submerged in uh, water like uh, shallow water for half an hour and not get damaged. Mm -hmm. Beyond that then your phone may get damaged, water damaged and the company is not liable. Mm -hmm. So this is because uh, you know uh, all the buttons and ports are sealed with a sealant which has the capacity to hold water at the bay. But then that sealant also has some threshold value yeah. which is IP68. So is this is this an independent uh, valuation that a phone has to get? Which yes, every some... phone which is which claims to be water and dustproof needs to get IP68 uh, or IP rating from a government organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Pixel has only IPX8, which is it's only waterproof and not dustproof. So there's actually a government organization that decides whether a phone is waterproof. Yeah, or... yeah. So okay. you get that certificate. Every phone has to pass certain tests, certain conditions, and then only they get that IP68 rating so, or IP64 rating or IP65 rating. So anyway, moving back to the Note 10 now. Yeah, so that, that is what I was coming to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you see the trend, all these phones uh, have IP68 rating as two, since 2-3 two, years as common norms. Like almost mm -hmm. every phone, except for OnePlus, every fla major flagship phone has had that. Mm -hmm. But they are not able to move beyond IP68 solely because of the presence of uh, physical buttons. Mm -hmm. Now, if you remove those physical buttons and come up with a phone where the whole body is sealed and the buttons are only capacitive like the uh, home button on iPhone 6, 7 and 8, mm. you have that sealing power. So the only thing you have to worry about is that one port. So every sealant that was used uh, everywhere else gets uh, used on that port, the cost comes down mm. and then you can have a higher rated phone and the phones get less damage, the customer gets better waterproofing and that is and plus if you see physical buttons have a tendency to you know get loose mm. or probably malfunction or stop functioning because of dust especially in India where moisture and dust is a very major problem. Mm. So, uh, removing physical buttons and having capacitive buttons removes all that. Mm. And your phone becomes more durable. But, and software driven software uh, can be upgraded. You mm. can change your soft, uh, somebody If somebody is left handed, it can, he or she can change the you know, orientation of the power button. Mm. You're not stuck with only one sided button. So everything becomes customizable. So we're moving to a world basically where your phone is secured to the elements. Yes. But then, even if I buy a phone that's waterproof, dustproof, foodproof, oilproof, whatever mm -hmm. proof, but it will be closed for two years. 
so what's the point of having a phone that's proof of that can survive the next holocaust or that can survive a meteor hit but then won't work after two years see uh, this is this is where the business comes in huh. any phone on market right now if you pick up supposedly the 10s max the s10 plus pixel xl 3 or for that matter one plus 60 mm. these phones have the hardware which can outlast at least six seven years of technological advancements in software but you know if you keep your phone for five to six years and just re- get the battery replaced how will the company earn mm-hmm. and this is this is where they start throttling your performance in software updates so there is no monetization potential where i can have a phone that essentially lasts for 10 years even if they charge me 2 lakh rupees for it and all of that monetization that or the revenue source that a company can generate from me doesn't come necessarily only from the hardware which they'll have to replace every 2 years but then starts coming in from the software there is so see uh, if you remember uh, earlier we, you know there was a need to buy windows mm. and office all these were one time cost but now uh, if you remember office has shifted to office 365 which is a yearly mm. subscription mm. so in the future most probably you know the companies would have to shift all your uh, software driven needs to subscription model mm. where they start earning for giving you upgrades then they won't need to throttle because then that hardware purchase is one time you're they're charging you one lakh or probably for a flagship phone like galaxy fold they're mm. charging you two lakhs mm. but then they're giving you an option that if you want to uh, keep your phone for five years, you keep paying for the software updates. Mm. That is where the market is uh, changing anyway. Subscription model is the new thing mm. right now. Mm. So let's see. Probably this is the future. On that note, you can subscribe to our podcast on Spotify where it will be online soon. And we're trying to get it up on iTunes and every other podcast platform where you can catch it. This has been our first podcast ever on gadgets. Despite repeated attempts, we finally managed to do it after a week. Um, You'll keep having a weekly podcast on gadgets and among other things on Severus TV and crazy iOS solutions. Uh, We'll make these sites available for you on other platforms as well. Right now, they're standalone websites. There is a YouTube channel called Severus TV. Uh, I'm sure pretty soon crazy iOS solutions will also have its own YouTube channel. So that wraps up our first podcast. Um, Don't hesitate to write in if you like it. Tell us if you don't like it and you hate it. Tell us anyway because that will help us improve. You can write in to us at Vijay, V-I-J-A-Y-R-A-J, Vijayraj at Severus, S-E-V-E-R-U-S, Severus.in. That's Vijayraj at Severus.in. Or you can alternatively write to mrigank at gmail.com. That's M-R-I-G-A-N-K-H at the rate gmail.com. So that wraps up our first first podcast. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube.